Hi, I'm Terry McCall, mountain bike editor at Canadian Cycling Magazine. Today we're talking about Structure Cycleworks, a Calgary, Alberta-based brand working hard to imagine a new way to think about bike design. This spring, after years of design and prototyping, Structure released the SCW1, its first mountain bike. It's a major divergence from standard design with the front suspension integrated into the frame, similar to how rear suspension is. I also got to ride the unique bike, including putting it in a head-to-head -head time test with some of the best bikes out there right now. Uh, tune in for the second video with the results and ride impressions of the SUW1. For now, let's go to Lottie Hall with more on this unique Designed in Canada bike. It really starts with the idea of making the bike more stable in the front, less inclined to dive, but also more compliant. So with a linkage suspension, you don't have any bushings in the system. There's nothing sliding. You're rotating on sealed cartridge bearings with very low friction and getting into the shock stroke very readily. That means that the bike goes over front obstacles, small to medium sized bumps, very compliantly and also has a big reduction in the tendency to go over the bars with the application of the front brake. When it comes to the overall design, design philosophy, the rear we thought should be pretty recognizable pretty normal because we're doing enough that's different in the front. We aren't here to shock people, we're here to introduce better function. Initially we want the bike at static and sag to be fairly steep and nimble, easy steering. And then as the bike moves into its travel we want it to become more stable, not less. And with the linkage system as the front brake is applied and only the front suspension is compressed, it stays at 66 degrees all the way through the travel and it also maintains the trail number which is the measure of front wheel self-centering. There's actually a misconception about the wheelbase growing with the bike. What happens with the axle path on the front is it comes up more vertically than a telescoping fork initially and then starts to arc back. So the wheelbase doesn't grow, it stays very constant front and rear because we are slightly rearward on the rear axle path initially as well. So they really track well together for the first 60% of travel before uh, shortening modestly. And at that point we're at such a slack head tube angle that your trail number has elongated with the front and rear suspension compressed together and you're just incredibly stable at that point. So under pitch, which is just compression of the front suspension, the fork will stay at 66 degrees within half a degree all the way through its travel and maintains a very constant trail number. But with compression of both the front and rear suspension, which we call heave, the fork actually does rake out. It's coming back from the axle uh, kind of like so, where the axle is not actually increasing the front center but the top of the fork is coming back at a slacker angle by 7.7 .7 degrees. The anti-dive feature of the bike wasn't actually the first design priority. We were looking more at axle path, but we do consider the anti-dive feature to be useful, obviously for, for reasons of keeping the rider centered in the cockpit. And even when it does dive, because the bike is raking out at the fork, uh, you won't feel as much that the wheel tucks under you. So that's the background and details on the SCW1. As you can see, I had the chance to test the bike on the trails in Nanaimo. Uh, it was fun getting to know the bike and see how that WTF linkage works on the trail. Um, in part two, I'll talk more about how the bike performs compared to a more conventional design. And then we'll put feelings aside and pit the SCW1 against three other bikes in a race against the clock.